Guys, Brian here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. Um, in this session, I'm going to talk about why you've been declined for a mortgage. Um, if you Google it, you know, mortgages declined, or maybe on YouTube even, you put mortgage in the car, why have I been declined? Um, I would say a couple of times a week, I get a phone call from a, a, an applicant to say, look, I've tried to go down this bank and I've been declined. Or probably more is I've gone to this bank via broker and I've been declined and I don't know why. Um, so it's really, you know, I get a, a number of, and we get a lot of questions through this. So why have you been declined? Let me go through some of the main reasons why applicants get declined, okay? One, uh, credit profile. But if you've, been, if you've been declined due to your credit profile, the lenders will generally tell you, you haven't passed a credit score, okay? So that's what it is. You know, basically you've got something on your credit, uh, credit profile, you need to go and pull a credit report, make sure you get a multi-agency credit report. I'll leave a link uh, to, in our notes how to go and get that. Uh, usually they're free for the first month and then they'll charge you. Um, so yeah, go and get your credit report and that will tell it its own story. So that's one reason people have been declined. Second reason is to do with affordability. Well, in all honesty, if you did your job properly or the broker did their job properly, they should know the affordability calculation. They should run the affordability calculation. They should know how things are treated. Uh, for example, secondary income like bonus, commission and so forth. And a lot of the time, that's where the problem is. Um, you're going with brokers that don't necessarily know their stuff or you're trying to do this directly, whereby you're just putting the stuff, but lenders may take 50% of the commission, 60% of the commission. They may not take, uh, you know, additional sort of, um, um, whether it's benefits and so forth. So how do they see your uh, additional income? And that's really got the bearing, because you think, oh, right, well, I'm getting £3,000 a month. Why are they not using £3,000 a month? Well, a lot of lenders have got different criteria. And if the broker has not done their checks, they have not put their affordability calculations in with the lender beforehand and just sort of did it quickly, you get declined. So that's another reason, but it's, these are pretty straightforward things of why you're getting declined, okay? The third is around documentation. You've said you've got an X amount of document and they don't like the document or, or, or uh, they don't, you know, you said you're earning, I don't know, 30,000 uh, pounds and then the documents, your SA302 if you're self-employed for example, and that's where the majority of the problems are because on an employed person you generally can see the pay slips. Um, on self-employed it's much harder to sort of determine. You thought okay you've earned £30,000 but actually your SA302 or your tax calculation shows £15,000 because you know you've got all your costs coming out, you've got various costs or you've, you've brought losses from previous years. Now you might have earned £30,000 however that's not what your account and your HMRC return says, and that's what the lenders go with. So again, it's around documentation and proof of documentation. But the one that people come back with and say, I don't know. So the lender has not told me why I've been declined. That is more than most likely to be fraud related. Now, when I say fraud, don't say, oh my God, fraud, oh my God, what's happened? Generally, it's because the lender doesn't believe you. Okay, now that could be a number of reasons. The typical ones that I get is um, you've gone for a mortgage application, maybe by another broker, um, and you've gone to that lender and they've asked for your bank statement, pay slips, proof of income, you know, usual things. And then either your broker has not disclosed the situation properly, and generally that's the case, or um, you, you know, you need to get this stuff agreed beforehand. What's your criteria around this? What's your criteria around that? The typical scenario is um, three months ago, you were on um, £25,000 salary, and right now you've been given a pay rise to £50,000, and you're going for a mortgage application. That hits alarm bells of the lender. So hang on a minute, why has that happened? Have they changed jobs? What's going on with that? So that's a big one, big hike in salary just before a mortgage application. Job change with a big hike, okay? Was well, self-employed um, on £15,000 a year, declared by HMRC last year, and now is on £60,000 employed job in a very small company. Why do I mean small company? Because they don't believe them, right? Because the small company could be your uncle, cousin, friend who's employing you for £60,000, although you've never earned that money by your tax returns ever. 
and all of a sudden you're now employed in a company that's you know four four salaries and guess what that company has only shown a tax return of twenty thousand pound profit how are they affording you paying you sixty thousand pounds where they've only shown sixty you know twenty thousand pounds tax returns or profit for the last couple of years alarm bells okay so those are the reasons so it's around documentation it's around understanding the process of the lenders now generally people get employed generally people salaries go up generally people can get employed there's no laws around um, being employed by smaller companies but there needs to be a story around it and also it's very important the broker and yourself have a discussion about these risks okay because once a lender gets suspicious about your income they could put you on a shared database there are databases there's one database called hunter whereby they can say beware other lenders we have declined this applicant applicant and normally it says could not verify income it doesn't say fraud it doesn't say anything like it just says we cannot verify income okay so once you go on that database you go to the next lender and, and I'd see the trend, you know, uh, some clients go to one, one broker and the broker applies for two, two banks and they get declined. And then the guys, well, do you know what? That broker was rubbish. Let me go and do this myself. And they go and do the third and fourth bank. And all of a sudden they've got four declines on their, on their report. Okay. If you've been declined, they haven't told you what it is. It's really important. You do not start going down the lists. Okay. It probably means that the initial broker should have had that discussion because you, sh you should identify that you're a high risk client. These are the issues with you, okay? How do we um, make sure the lender is comfortable with the situation? So, you know, if someone came to me and said, look, I've just got a new job, by the way, I was earning 20,000 pounds, I'm now earning 40,000 pounds, there is a set of questions we need to ask and there's a set of questions that we need to make sure we get right for that lender, for the underwriter. So the underwriter understands this is the picture around it. Oh, by the way, I was a junior, right? I don't know, IT consultant. Now I've gone into a new IT firm. I've been given a, I've been given a, um, a big uh, mandate now, a, a bit bigger salary because my role is in disaster recovery. And at the moment, that's, a, that's something in high demand. Fine. Okay. That makes sense. Oh, by the way, the company has got 200 other employees fine that makes sense okay um and by the way this is my cv and it's all related to these jobs um hence i've been making my way through it you know i started off on twenty thousand pounds i then got another job for thirty thousand pounds and now there's you know fifty thousand pounds and the underwriter will say well, okay well i can see the progression onto that okay so it's really important um the broker really understands your position because different lenders will see things differently. It may be that we go with a, a lender that's not got a computer, you know, a big factory setup. We, we go to a lender that's got individual underwriters that could understand these things rather than getting flagged up by a computer system and going down the sort of compliance route of a lender without even having that discussion with anybody. Okay. Um, so uh, there are lots of reasons why people get declined. You know, I've just touched on a few. Uh, but what you found out, hopefully, through this video is not all brokers are the same. Um, there is a reason we do what we do. Um, there's a reason we charge what we charge. Um, and there's a reason why people get declined. Okay, always. Okay, so just because the lender hasn't told you that reason, um, it, that doesn't mean they don't know the reason. Um, sometimes with data protection acts, they can't actually disclose it um, for to to the brokers anyway. Um, but generally, um, I, I've I don't think I've had any many that I couldn't work out why the the, the applicants have been declined. So if you know what you're looking for. Um, there's always a way where you can find out why you've been declined and try to deal with it. And that's really important. I would normally go back to the same lender that declined me. So the first lender that declined me. And if it's a genuine uh, issue that we can resolve, I would resolve it with that first lender. So hang on a minute. This is the situation. Or I would wait three, six, six months, seven months, a year and go back to that same lender and say, do you know what? You didn't believe me. However, I've been here, here's my payslips, here's my P60, here's my stuff, here's my taxes that's been paid. Um, can you, can you, uh, uh, you know, do the application? And we would 
would obviously help that client get a mortgage through that. So it's really important um, things are dealt with, okay, um, and, and dealt with properly. Um, I, ho I hope you found this useful. Please like and subscribe to this channel. Um, we talk about everything to do with mortgages, whether it's residential, uh, buy to let and commercial. Um, yeah, and I hope you found this useful. Thank you so much. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker before applying. Niche Advice Limited is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.